Alrighty, so welcome to the Gallimaufry Gals book club. We are um, a confusing medley of thoughts, ideas, and opinions. Um, we are three sisters and their mom. <laughs> and we are discussing a jumble of books. Um, my name is Melissa. I am drinking a mixture of uh, cider and diet squirt today, so it's good. <laughs> interesting it's really good and I don't know just a random question just to kind of like get to know each other a little better or whatever is um so today's little question is preferred story experience um and I think my preferred overall is is definitely the physical book um but I've actually recently been enjoying like nonfiction things um via audio just kind of like kind of because they're more podcasty and then i've found like i like ebooks when i'm like in between situations like waiting or like you know stuff like that where i can just pull it up on my phone quick or whatever so yeah introduce yourselves again and what you're drinking and your preferred story experience um, Angie, <laughs> sorry, I forgot you guys are <laughs> not in the order that I see you in. Sorry. <laughs> uh, sure. Um, I'm Angie. Hi. I'm drinking <laughs> sugar-free blue Hawaiian punch. Mm -hmm. It's cool and tasty. <laughs> um, my preferred story experience, I would say a physical book first. Um, but I have to agree on nonfiction. I do prefer it in audio format as like a podcast sort of in the background. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of nights, that's sort of what we fall asleep to is it's usually Storm Before the Storm by Mike Duncan. Cool. It's uh, Roman history. That's and awesome. we listen to that too when we go camping. So it's like we hear cool. the beginning. Then I kind of fall asleep a little bit, wake up, learn some more, and so now all the pieces are sort of coming together. And, <laughs> yeah. Cool. In chrono chronological order. Hopefully. Um, somewhat, somewhat. Yep. <laughs> Carl's listened to it about 5,000 times, so when I'm like, wait a minute, what came first? He'll, and then he gives me the rundown. So. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Who's next? I guess I'll go. Uh, hi. <laughs> Miranda. Um, <laughs> I am, well, I was drinking some, uh, some uh, Long Island iced tea, but it's gone, so I'm guessing I'm drinking water now. Um, <laughs> and as for how to, how I prefer to read books, usually I prefer the physical book most of the time, but there are some books that I actually have really enjoyed the audio, and I think that's, it really depends on who's narrating whether or not sure. I like it or not. Like, I've been reading, um, uh, there's been a couple of books that I've been listening to that are on audio, and I've only read them that way, and they're great. But then there's some that I've read the actual book and then heard the audio, and I'm like, the audio didn't do it justice. So, yeah, like, it really does make it, a difference. It makes a huge difference on mm -hmm. who's actually reading the book. Um, but otherwise, um, I, I do read a lot of ebooks because I do have a like a little tablet that I can read them on. And so I'll, I'll do that sometimes. I'll just like go sit out on the porch or whatever if I can't make it to the library to get one or order one or whatever. So nice. Like a lot of these ones I'll just, yeah, I've just borrowed from the library on my ebook. Mm -hmm. an ebook. Nice. Cool. Mom? Oh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not I don't know why that's that. so funny. It's going to make me laugh every time, I think. <laughs> I'm actually drinking blush wine with cranberry Ooh, juice. Nice. So, and I also prefer physical books, but I read a lot of ebooks just because it's easier. I have easier access to them, and especially with the library having been closed and stuff, and I just get a lot of free ebooks that you know look interesting, and then I just read them when I have time. Mm -hmm. And audio, it's been a while since I listened to them because mostly I listened to it back when it was books on tape. So, <laughs> um, but I do find 
I do like fiction. I like a variety of fiction. I like some nonfiction. It, it just depends on the subject matter. But I do like a good murder, so. <laughs> <laughs> and a mystery, you know, murder or mystery or both together. <laughs> it's a precursor to our next book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so. So we decided to go ahead and read all three of the books <laughs> in the trilogy. Um, as as you guys know, we were... Did someone put stars? <laughs> someone <laughs> threw stars in there. That's really cute. Anyway, so you guys are graffitiing my, my beautiful presentation. <laughs> You're beautifying it. Making it more magical. Exactly. No, I like it. Um, but yeah, we were just going to read Bear in the Nightingale, and it was reading so quickly, and just we were just really into it. So um, we figured, well, let's just try and read them all. So we did. Um, the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. Um, I chose this series, I guess, series. <laughs> um, so what they're about, um, I figured... I figure we can just kind of go over like some of the main points as we start talking about each book, but um, I guess like an over a very wide overview is it's a fairy tale takes place in the middle like Middle Ages Russia um, covers um, Russian folklore. It's about a main characters character um, Basia and her like coming of age kind of story and um and there's wars <laughs> and there's a battle against chaotic neutral chaotic good and chaotic evil I guess you could say <laughs> and yeah how those kind of intertwine and so overall impressions um, oh, and why why I chose this book, um, I, we like to kind of talk about, like, or choose books that um, might challenge us in a way, and um, normally I'd say, like, you know, I really like fantasy, so, I mean, it seems kind of not out of my norm to choose something like this, really, so, but the reason I thought this might be good and considered, like, challenging is because it does touch on... Um, like the old Russian religion and the coming of um, Christian orthodoxy. So I figured I could find some, I'm sure there would be some challenge for me in that. So I figured, let's do it. <laughs> um, so that's why I chose this one. Um, overall impressions, sorry I'm talking so much. I promise you guys will get a chance here. <laughs> fine. Um, overall impressions, I... I have a little thing here that I wrote down so I didn't forget it, but um, I loved the magic in the storytelling. Um, she definitely made the series feel like a fairy tale. Um, she just had really good word wordsmithing and just put words down so like simplis like simply but like precisely and poetically. <laughs> so I really loved her writing. I think it it really married well with the type of story she was putting together. Um, I guess, yeah, and like, I'll leave on a, on a good note. So the next thing I'll say is, um, I, I do wish that I felt like the characters were a little bit flat. Um, I felt like they could have been fleshed out a little more. We can talk more about that, but, and then I think it was like the end, by the end of the first book, I was feeling like this could really be an anime. Like I could definitely, <laughs> I was getting like Studio Ghibli <laughs> vibes the whole time. <laughs> so like, yeah, those are my overall impressions. So you guys can go next and um, whoever wants to take it away. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of that. Um, it definitely gave me a magical kind of fairy tale feeling and I really liked that. There were definitely some scenes that felt like they could have used more, like, descriptors and, like, what was actually happening. And there were some that I was like, okay, well, 
that made me a little bit uncomfortable, but for the most part, I I pretty much enjoyed the, the whole series. Yeah, me too. And I would recommend it. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with that. I, I really loved her word, her wordsmithing, the way she put the descriptors together and um, just even in the first book when she was talking about when they came into Russia and you know just the way she described it and you could you could actually envision in your head what they were seeing and feeling and I felt like she did that very well throughout all three books um, that was one thing that really impressed me mm -hmm. and you know, it also made me think about what choices women had back then and oh, yeah, for how sure. lucky we are to be we're in living in the age that we are in now because there weren't many choices back then. So, and it made me think about, well, well, like you three girls, like how would you have fit in to society back then? You know, <laughs> would you, I can't imagine you guys being... <laughs> I could imagine you being witches, maybe moms, um, maybe in a convent, but I, I think you had more of, I don't know how to say, Vasilla, is that how you say her Asia? name? I, that's another thing we can talk about, because um, there are going to be a lot of name destroying in, in this discussion, um, yeah, and it'll yes. be really interesting to hear you guys, what how you guys say these names, so... Um, yes, but the main character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and yes. some of the names had like they're like full full name, and then there are like the little nickname, pet name variations of those names yes. that she would use too. So it's like that it was, was very. Ilya, it was Vasya. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Speaking about that, like I don't know about you guys, but that didn't really confuse me at all. Hmm. Like it always seemed really clear who they were talking about for the most part. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, there were a couple times I was like, wait, oh, and then I was like, okay, but mm -hmm. I think yeah, I, like, I just don't know how to pronounce yeah. them, and that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, and I read her little, um, I think it was in the end or the beginning, I don't remember the first book, where she talks about um, how she chose to write the names, and how, I think yeah. it was at the end, mm -hmm. about how some of them are completely Russian, and then some of them she chose a way to spell them in a way that is kind of Russian, but at the same time would be easily read as English. Right, yeah. Which yeah. I actually thought made it more confusing, because I was trying, I, I honestly, when I first started reading, the first thing I did was try to figure out how I was supposed to say it, because I couldn't remember mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. how certain letters were supposed to be said, because I once upon a time tried to learn Russian. Cool. Obviously, I didn't remember much of it. But yeah. anyways, I was looking, and I was like, <laughs> okay. Awesome. And like... Um, like her name, yeah, I, I don't know how to say her for her full name, so I always just referred to her as Basia. Oh, okay. Because Ys are supposed to be like an E. I oh, like an e yeah, and I was, I I was seeing Vas, Vasia in my head. <laughs> yeah, Vasia, but Vasia, but Vasia. yeah. Vasia. And I, I think her full name I was pronouncing Vasilisa. That's kind of how I was saying it too, but I don't like, I don't, I don't like Vaseline. that name. I don't know why. Yeah. No. Sounds like Vaseline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vasia, Vasia. Oh man. That like takes on a whole different feeling in my brain. Yeah. Oh. In, in the her author's note, she says she wanted to retain as much of the exotic flavor as possible. But she also wanted them to be reasonably pronounceable and aesthetically mm -hmm. pleasing. So yeah, I really so, appreciated her notes. Like, yeah, she was, she was very transparent about what she was trying to do. Yeah, that was really cool. And that, mm -hmm. so that was something I liked about about the series was that she like took the effort and time to sort of like research. Um, yeah, like just do her research, and then like even like parts of the stories were like like people in real life, like the prince was like a real person in power in Russia yeah. during that time and like right. Moscow did burn and like just all these real things that happened but she like took you know gave it a different reasoning yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and I think it just sort of yeah it was like a nice layer of like it 
I don't know. I think maybe it sort of helped me get into the story of like, ooh, this is like partially real history, and then right. like sort of the the fan fantastical thought of like oh like maybe this could you know really happen or sort of you know like oh maybe mm -hmm. there were really these you know like pagan deities and the uh Chirodi? I don't know oh yeah know. well I'll talk about that <laughs> anyway <laughs> but yeah I really appreciated that aspect of the book and I agree with you guys too like the readability mm -hmm. it's just everything was so smooth that once you started reading it was just like whoosh Mm -hmm. like I want to keep reading and now I want the next book and now I want the next book <laughs> <laughs> which is why we ended up reading all three because yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> flew through them yeah um, I was just adding a question so we didn't forget to talk about it we can talk about it now too if you guys want but um, mom your question about um, where you guys think that you would be in this setting like in the context of what was provided um like marriage convent um burned at the stake or burned at the stake i guess was being the, exiled i guess or exiled yeah exiled. probably married a mom or in a convent and when you say mom you you mean like married and yeah. oh. like a married <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> Or just a mom. <laughs> or just a mom. Yeah. That's where yeah. I would have been too. I would have probably just been married off and I'd have been fine with it. Probably married, but I don't know. I know I'm with <laughs> like a little wild streak. I don't know. Right. I don't know. No one's gonna tie me down. <laughs> right. I know. It depends on the guy too that they're like, oh you have well, to be married. Like I, obviously I love being married, so it's not like Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> But just that's thinking very, about it back yeah, then and like true. what being married meant to right. you know, was Yeah. Like it was more than just like, oh I love this guy or you know. Right. Right. Most have of the time, it was just like they were also a lot older than the men were a lot older Which, than the women too than I can't say well, anything to that. <laughs> right, right. And I mean not you're also like usually like fifteen, six like fourteen to like sixteen <laughs> range when you're getting married off. So yeah, like right. Right. Yeah. right then, they're it's there, like forties, like, fifties. When you're grown up, like that's no. That <laughs> when you're fourteen, uh, it matters. <laughs> yeah, very true. Well, the thing is, too, I noticed, like in the book, when in the first book, when they met the prince, Prince Ivan, he was considered old at thirty. Right. Yeah. That's so, true. So then I was thinking, okay, um, the sister, sister O, Olia. Olia? Olga? Yes, no, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Olga was the nurse. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the, yeah. Olga. Olga. Whatever Olga. name Olga. for her. <laughs> what was that? Either Olga. Olga or Olya, either one. I was thinking Olga, but yeah. Um, you know, she was like 14 when she was married. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, gosh, if 30 is old and 14 to 16 is a age you get married for girls and you know sometimes they were the second wives already because the first wives usually died from whatever reason right so the guy could have been in his 20s or 30s and right. we wouldn't i wouldn't think of that as being old no yeah True. <laughs> yeah yeah i i i could see myself having been in a convent but also mm -hmm. seeing the Domovoy and being friends with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. But yeah, yeah, that's a that's an interesting question to it's, it's interesting to think about. <laughs> yeah. And and I think it also would depend on what <laughs> financial status was oh, too. Oh yeah. Like it all depends on the the situation. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> You know, if you come from a wealthy family or whatever, a semi-wealthy, you have a few yeah, more choices than right. if you're poor. And you know, yes, you're going to be a servant for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. um, I guess before we dive into the book, I mean, I just wanted—I made a couple slides just to kind of show okay. because oh, Rush, cool. like Russian history, to me is completely new. I know nothing about it. So um, 
when I was list, when I was hearing them talk about sleeping in and on top of the stove, I was so confused. So um, this is these are just a couple um, <laughs> a couple of the possible possible um, ovens that they used. Um, and I've always loved Russian history, so oh, cool. Yeah, I never touched touched on it. I I don't know. So have all of you, were all of you kind of familiar a little bit with Russian history or? It was a little bit. Uh, Carl's super interested in it, along with Roman history. So like we sort of talked about it. There's a podcast that he listened to or a lecture or something series we'd listen to sometimes cool mm. and Miranda you said you were trying to learn Russian mm -hmm. so like I, I know some of like the stoves and stuff like I I already kind of had an idea of what that looked like oh so it wasn't too hard for me to picture okay. but mm -hmm. I can definitely understand like being like what yeah how do you sleep on top of stove like, right <laughs> <laughs> I really like how those are set up though I, yeah I think that's really yeah. It's really neat. Yeah, these um, are just a couple um, fan arts. But hey, mom, how did you get into Russian history? Yeah, um, I don't know. I just have always liked it since high school. Um, part of history class, and I just I don't know. I just always have had an affinity to it, and have read things on it, and of course, lots of fiction about it. So, hmm. and Tsar Nicholas and his family, the Romanovs. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> it was like completely. What was that, what was that movie? Uh, that an, uh, animated Anastasia? movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I like Anastasia. Like, that was <laughs> it's like one of my favorite animated movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So these are I, just a little couple more things of art that okay. I saw. Oh, cool. Little, little Ooh, spirits, yeah. and um, I didn't really know. One of the things I was a little confused about through um, through the stories is whether some of these were good or like neutral, and some of them weren't. It, I think I, was, I came away with the impression that some of them were more like malicious in nature than others. Mm -hmm. um, so I just call them I spirits. Maybe more <clears throat> mischievous than malicious. Except for maybe some of the woodland ones. And that's that was the thing. It was like, I feel like maybe, like these guys, the, like the, there's a horse, household spirit. Um, mm -hmm. And those ones seemed more, <laughs> yeah, these are. <laughs> yeah, like the household them. one, the dumb boy, and like the one that was a. Uh, the dealt with the horses like they seemed pretty friendly and like mm -hmm. but they're also like within the house so they're probably treated better than the ones that are also out in the like wild in the trees and in the, in the water or whatever and i don't really think that they're necessarily malicious per se but i mean the rasalka for example the one that basically like oh i want to eat that like <laughs> i mean <laughs> that comes off as evil but at the same time i don't think that it's meant to be evil as in more of just like a, um, like that's just like a need. nature. Yeah, yeah. Like nature is not always friendly, but it is, it's just one of the thing, many facets of nature. And I think that's more or less how the spirits are supposed to kind of portray as just the different parts of nature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Except for that one, the vampire one. That yeah. one's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is very creepy for sure. Well, that one's also like brought back from the dead. Like that one's like done with malicious intent in the person yes. that summons them basically in their heart. So like, it makes sense. Right. So they're, yeah, they're not like the other kind. Right. And then this is just the little livestock spirit. <laughs> A little what? The livestock spirit. Oh, yeah, then, I like that. Then I just had to throw in the the icons and the iconostasis. 
um, just because that's pretty unfamiliar for most of the Western Western world. Um, so, yeah, and we don't I really have them in our churches. No, and I think the nearest one up here, um, well, the nearest one up here is pretty remote, um, and it's only a seasonal, it's only a seasonal church because it's a tourist area, but. Um, oh, okay. Is that up on the South Shore? Yes. Okay, I know which one you mean now. <laughs> St. Mary's is what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it Byzantine or Russian Orthodox, I think Greek it's, Orthodox? I, it's Greek Orthodox, I it think. It is Greek, okay, yeah. I think we're Russian, yeah, I don't know for sure. I want to say it's actually Russian, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Angie, you had some articles. Um, did you have anything of, like, insight that you thought was pretty interesting or that you learned? Um, yeah, I just thought it was really, really curious that, I don't know, that it's sort of that that's the, the tradition of the Eastern Orthodox churches. You know, they're not, they're not the Roman Catholic churches, but they mm -hmm. are still Catholic churches. And the icons are typically, you know, saints and they're, the icons themselves are usually painted um, not too good lifelike because they're not meant to be sort of a an idol to pray to it's just supposed to be a reminder so if you see some and they look simple it's because they're meant to be like two-dimensional and i mean i'm sure there's some better ones you know that don't follow that but that was sort of the original idea was that it was meant to be <clears throat> sort of simple accessible and then um it's just it's interesting yeah when we talk more about that i think it'd be interesting to bring up the idea of the iconoclasms that have happened in history too so. okay. okay yeah cool yeah that's awesome yeah so i guess we'll start with the bear and the nightingale so i just have a couple the key key points um the plot points it's about vasia or Vas vasia growing up she sees the Domovoy and she meets the bear and the Winter King very young. Um, her father, Peter, marries a Christian lady from Moscow named Anna. She can also see the Domovoy and is very frightened by them. Um, and there's a prominent priest named Constantine who comes to their village and hates it um, because it's so remote. And, um, and then um, toward the end, there is the big... The battle between like the Chirti and the Domovoy um, against the bear. Um, did I miss anything or can things be added to? <laughs> I'm sure I missed things but. I mean, that's pretty much the, the clear points of what it was. Um, can I ask you guys what you thought of the title because I thought the title was very misleading with the bear and the nightingale because the nightingale doesn't come in until much later and it's not, I mean, it's not like those two are opponents. I mean, they are in a way, but I mean, like it should have been maybe like the bear and the winter king or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I agree. It was, I felt a little like, yeah, like it was misled and then, mm -hmm. Like the story, this book, it, it's like, like maybe this should have been the title of like the third book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sort yeah, of, or like the right, second yeah. book, or like maybe the second book where they, like, they actually fight. That's a good point. And maybe, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, there just should have been a different title. Yeah, I, I, I think it would have been brought up. I think it would have been, yeah, better on a later a later book that's it would have made point. more sense yeah, but even still like the nightingale is is not, not a, the winter king so it's it's, it's not the horse important Sorry. thing and until later like yeah it barely plays a part in this book mm -hmm. yeah because i was kind of like, felt like oh sorry oh go ahead well i was just gonna say it kind of felt like the nightingale was it kind of seemed random throughout the series to me in general like, 
I don't know, like the idea of an, of the night, like, because the nightingale is Slove, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't even, I, I guess I have trouble kind of connecting still the nightingale with Slove. And it just oh, seems kind of random to me. That's it's, that's me. <laughs> right, it's weird. It's like the magic the magic horses actually start as birds. Yeah. Yeah. And then Well, they do start as birds. Okay, yeah. I missed yeah. that then. Cuz so, I thought they were so turning like, into birds. Well, no. basically they have two forms. Okay. Horse and bird, and that's what his particular oh, okay. bird shape is. is I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense then. Yeah, it felt like maybe the Maybe I was reading too quickly, but that didn't really come through to me very strongly. Yeah, I, I just kept looking for something. I mean, I I don't know. I kept waiting for something in the first book to tie the bear oh, yeah. and the nightingale together or mm-hmm. in some. So I just didn't know if it was me or, you know, but I really no. liked the book. So yeah. I'll get all on that. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel... I guess to my to add to the whole overall impression, I did feel as though this book could have been. It did feel very fairy tale like in that it it seemed to clip along very quickly, and I feel like it could have definitely been a lot longer. And I definitely would have been okay with a longer series or like a more in depth character analysis between like each of the like main characters because I felt like. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I just had this overall feeling that I didn't really get to know each of the characters very well. Like, even Vasya, I feel like I only know, like, her fiery spirit. And, like, once in a while she'll cry, but overall I just didn't really... And maybe she doesn't have that other side, and we can talk about that, too. I know, like... I felt like in the beginning of the book that it went along like really fast and I was like like honestly the first I don't know maybe couple of chapters I was like kind of like okay why does this matter like it just felt like it went like really fast like suddenly oh she's now she was like you know being born to now she's seven now she's you know 12 right. or whatever and I'm like okay yeah. wait, what is yeah. going on yeah it <laughs> like, clipped along really quick yeah Mm-hmm. I thought she was going to be a child pretty much through the whole book. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was kind of yeah. expecting, but... And then I was kind of like, okay, well, how is this relevant to what we need mm-hmm. to know? And I felt like if it was... it, Some of that stuff could have been delved into a little bit deeper to make it feel like it mattered more. Mm-hmm. And I think, too, that, like, once you read the other books, it kind of brought in more more of the other characters, more of their personalities. At least for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I, I felt like this was sort of what I needed right now was just sort of like a quick, easy, but still like interesting and fun Mm -hmm. book series. But, mm-hmm. like, once I read it, yeah, I sort of felt like, oh, okay, now maybe I could focus on, like, more detail and, mm-hmm. and you know, sort of what you guys were saying, too, were like, oh, it might be really cool to see things more fleshed out. And, and but, yeah, for mm-hmm. right now, I, I appreciated sort of the Oh, yeah. Of- and, like, for, I mean, it kind of seemed like that was kind of what she was going for anyway, um, mm-hmm. is more of, like, a fairy tale feel. So maybe that what that was a conscious choice that she didn't want to get too much into the different layers of each character because that would kind of lose its fairy tale feeling. True. Oh, and the oh, yeah. first book would have been like like all three books put together. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So now we need a TV stories that's super epic, like Game of Thrones. I know, right? <laughs> like, I definitely oh, want awesome. this I to be... definitely watch that. Me too. <laughs> Maybe not, like, eight series, but definitely a, a movie or three or something. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> or an anime. Or an anime, you know? <laughs> Studio Ghibli could put out a pretty good show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not just any anime. It's got to be a studio Jiffy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to get into some questions, um, 
Miranda, um, I don't know if you wanted to ask your questions or not. Sure. You can, yeah. um, if you could see spirits of fairy tales, would you think you've gone mad as Anna did? Or would you embrace it as uh, Vasia did? Do you think there were, um, where they were raised had a lot to do with their perceptions of these creatures? So Anna obviously had a very different reaction than Vasia did. Vasia was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to feed right. the bread crust to the dumb boy. And <laughs> Anna's like, demons be caught. So, right. Well, they were related to each other, but I'm not sure because Anna was the daughter of Prince Ivan and he was a half brother to Vasya's oh, mom. I didn't even so catch I don't that. Know which, so I'm guessing they really, they didn't have, it would have, so it would have been I don't think they shared the same bloodline, or did they? I don't yeah, think they did. No, I don't think so. That one so. book has don't the thing in the did. back. No, they don't. I, it's okay. just... Um, I think they do, but through the um, brother side. So not through, like... Um, oh, actually, like through... Like through Vizia's mom or grandma's mm -hmm. side. Anna. Wait, Anna... No, yeah, they're not related. Okay, because I was thinking, well, is that why she can see, you know, the spirits? Because no. she's got the no, same No, it just shows that people. she's married to Peter. And Peter is from Ivan's. Um, yeah, but in the book, line. they, they talked to, because like, um, oh, Dimitri or whatever was the one that, or not, Dimitri's dad? I don't remember. She's so, name. so Tamara, that's the grandmother, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So she was married to Ivan Danilovich. Yes. And they had Marina, who married Peter. Yeah. So, but Anna Ivanova was not related no. to Ivan Ivanovich. No. So okay. in book three, there's like a genealogy family tree in the back. Oh, okay. I don't think that's I what I'm looking that. at. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, gosh, you have a really good memory. No, oh, yeah. no, I don't. No. <laughs> no, and I wish I would have. I don't know if it was in the other books or not. I only saw it in the third one, and I, I was think like. think it was only in the last one. Mm -hmm. or no, yeah, last book, yeah. So I was like, okay, oh, there we that would have been helpful earlier. I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, I was going to wear my Sasquatch shirt. I wore it yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I do, that's part of a question that I have um, a little bit later, but I'm just trying to think, like, I mean, I was upstairs just folding or putting laundry away or whatever, and I look over, and Bela's standing suddenly, like, on the top step looking at me, like, you know, little bare face, just little eyeballs, <laughs> and I, like, freak out, you know, like, I mean, that's just kind of like a gut reaction, like, oh my god, but like, I didn't think like, oh, it's Bela, like, like, I was like, what is that? Like, that was my very first, like, millisecond reaction, you know? <laughs> like, um, so, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you want to say one thing, you want to say that you would, like, that I, you know, I wouldn't be scared or I'd be more curious than anything, but, like, I, I think it would have to be, it would have to do with yeah, probably, like, how others in my family and friends, um, how they would view it, but also, like, you know, like, how, what is my first experience with one of these things? Like, if it was, it was a bad one, then I probably would be more scared, but, like, if it was maybe, like, a cuter one, I'd probably be more open to the scarier ones, and, like, it would, it would probably all really depend on a lot of different things. I know that's a that's a boring answer, but <laughs> no, it's not. It's an honest one. <laughs> the thing is, too, is Vasia was brought up with stories about all the different spirits, and her so mom was, was also like feeding them. Right. So, well, her mom was wasn't around when she was after she was born. So, but her nurse told oh, those stories yeah. a long yeah. time. Right. So she was very familiar with them. Where Anna. I don't think they told those stories in Moscow because they were Christians. And so well, maybe the servants told each other, but I don't, you know, I think she had a very different upbringing. 
Mm -hmm. and considered herself a Christian too. And didn't. But what about you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You know, if, if I started talking to creatures in the corner, I'm sure you guys would have me go see a psychiatrist and try to get my get me on some meds or something, or think I had a stroke or something. Because <laughs> in this day and age, we don't tend to believe in that. And yet, and a lot of cultures, you know, they do believe that things have spirits like trees and you know different things and so I don't know in this day and age I would actually talk to you guys and figure out if you were crazy I mean gone insane or if you were actually seeing something and if you were in my house I wouldn't mind because I could keep an eye on you and make sure you didn't hurt yourself <laughs> so I guess I yeah I I'll save the question. It's very related though, but I'll I'll save it for when it comes. Okay. What about yeah, think, you, Marie? How about you, Angie? What were you gonna say? Oh, I just I think it is interesting that like things I don't know they thought about things in like simpler terms. Like oh, I'm Christian, and so if if I would see that, then that's obviously, like, the devil or a witch. Like, I just, witch has got a bad name. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think if, if I had known stories and then somehow had been given that gift to see them and I wasn't schizophrenic, then mm -hmm. I think it would be cool. Um, but I don't. Yeah, How do you know if schizophrenia isn't them just actually seeing spirits? That is a good point. Honestly. Well, sometimes. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm half serious. I'm, you know, I'm half serious about that theory. I yeah. Mean, I, I think there is a lot to, to be, that can be said about psychology. Like, I, I don't know. Right. It's Are you whole... seeing something that really is there that other people can't see? Or oh, exactly. <laughs> Or is it, right, or is it your brain fabricating something for you to see? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's you know, the thing with see. science versus magic is that exactly. science takes away the magic and it sees anything that can't be explained as basically wrong. Oh, yeah. so I was going to say, it's like everything is magic until science explains what it is. I mean, yeah, that in a sense, but there's still some things that... I wonder how much science is actually there and it's just it's science you know like <laughs> they say it it's this but how did they come to that conclusion is it because they couldn't actually also see or hear or whatever you know what this other person is because they don't have that magical prowess or whatever or like psychics for example some people are like that's complete bullshit but there's right. some people that completely say, oh, no, that's legit. Like, mm -hmm. I think psychics are somewhat, I mean, depending, are legit. Yeah. I don't think yeah. dial a psychic is maybe legit. I don't know. I've never tried them, but. I think I there's different know. levels, too. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. mean to cut you off. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, no. That's okay. <laughs> no. No. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, even in the book, there were different levels of the site. Like, there was... You've got um, oh, yeah, and Anna who could see, and then you've got Vivara who oh, yeah. could only oh, yeah, hear no, them. Sasha. Yeah, it was Vivara. And she couldn't yeah. see them, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. She was one without the sight, but she could still, she could still communicate with them, which mm -hmm. to a lot of, like nowadays, it'd be, you know, you're crazy. You're just hearing voices. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. But if hearing or seeing something that wasn't there now was like, parallel universes exactly <laughs> be cool i don't know i'm i think it'd be cool it would be <laughs> so i was thinking about the traveling through midnight i know it's not in this book but it's like ooh, time travel <laughs> yeah yeah yes i guess i wish i was magic <laughs> <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs>
I could just go to Lucia though, and <laughs> I would totally make next friends. No. <laughs> Charity would you be my are friend. Magically, wonderfully <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Miranda, what did you say that you would? I would totally be friends with the Charity. Nice. I would. I mean, at that age too, like I remember just like. I mean, we had a time rock out in the backyard. Like, we'd stand on it and we'd go through time, like, right. in our minds. Like, we were very imaginative kids. Oh, yeah. So, like, I feel like it wouldn't have been a far step for us to right. have seen something and been like, oh, yeah, hey, let's be friends. Like, mm-hmm. we'll go hang out in the backyard, mm-hmm. go wander through the woods and find things. Like, you know, we didn't I can tell totally anyone else. And so we beg the question of you. Would you tell anyone if you were able to see Dumavoy or Chirti or spirits? Please comment below. We will see you next week, and happy reading. Please remember to like our videos. It shows us that you enjoy what we're doing. Share with others. It brings together and broadens the community of book lovers and free thinkers. And subscribe. It helps support the mission to inspire more readers, cultivate free thinkers, and sustain the art of conversation. And we are doing a book giveaway once we reach 100 subscribers. And please comment. We want to get to know you. Happy reading, Gallimaufries.